Yo, what is happening guys? This is GM Cody and welcome back to another episode of the History of Hobby Games. Now this is really a supplemental episode. We could call this episode 1A. Um, I'll be doing these little supplemental episodes um, in conjunction with the main episodes that will have a broader overview of you know the chronological history of hobby games and in these supplemental episodes i'll be going into more detail about specific subjects i found interesting and in this first supplement we're going to be taking a look at one of the greatest authors of science fiction mr hg wells now i briefly mentioned wells and the invention of his little game little wars which could be said to be the first uh, miniatures war game and we're going to be taking a more in-depth look in not just the man but his little game. Now, Herbert George Wells was born in 1866 in Bromley, Kent, England. He was the youngest of four children. His father was a professional cricketer and shopkeeper, and his mother was a house servant. When Wells was around eight years old, he broke his leg and uh, was bedridden for a con considerable period of time. So his father started to bring the young Wells books to read from the local library. Of course, Wells devour, devoured them and started taking keen interest in reading and writing at this young age. This interest in reading and writing would continue for the remainder of his life and, of course, have a broad impact and really create, you know, the legend that became H.G. Wells. When his father, a few years later, uh, fractured his thigh, um, his professional cricketeering came to an end, and his side job of shopkeeping was not enough to support his family. Wells' mother had to go back to being a house servant, and for the next several years, the younger Wells would bounce around serving and failing at several apprenticeships. Eventually, he was accept accepted at a grammar school as a pupil and excelled uh, highly in Latin and science. He won a scholarship to Normal School of Science, studying biology, studying under the famous Thomas Henry Huxley. He went on to become a staff member, and in 1890, he earned a bachelor's degree in science zoology. He managed to find a posting as a teacher and wrote his first works, which were a two-volume set on biology, in 1893. But soon after, he found himself unemployed, and he was offered a place to stay with his aunt, Mary. It was there he started to write humorous articles for journals. He became very adept at his craft and very popular, and in 1895, he wrote his fir first full-length novel, The Time Machine. Thus, the father of science fiction was born. In this one work of creative genius, The Time Machine would go on to be considered a masterpiece and was also a huge success, uh, not just back then, but also today and si since it's been out. Uh, the next few years, Wells would crank out such immortal classics such as War of the Worlds, The Invisible Man, The First Men in the Moon, the Island of Dr. Moreau, and many more. His works would influence writers and creators even up to our modern day, as I just mentioned. Uh, Wells' writings were interesting because not only were they prophetic, creative, and told a great story, but they were also full of political and social commentary. See, Wells was an outspoken pacifist and socialist and would often inject his beliefs into these creative science fiction works. The other interesting thing to note is Wells wrote the bulk of his um, beloved works in a span of just six years. So all those classics I just named off were all written in a span of six years, which is crazy to think of, right? Wells was also a futurist for seeing the advent of uh, spacecraft, nuclear power, satellites, and more, kind of like Jules Verne did uh, around the same time. Wells was also probably the creator of the first miniatures war game. Though the exact date of the origins of Little Wars is not exactly known, it was sometime around 1898. The story goes, his good friend, Jerome K. Jerome, who was also a writer, was over for dinner, and after the dinner, Jerome picked up one of the spring-loaded toy naval guns Wells had laying around. He proceeded to line up toy soldiers and started shooting them down with the spring-loaded toy gun. Wells took up in the activity with his friend and later started to invent rules around the game. Thus, Little Wars was born. Soon, more of Wells' friends started to join in on the Little Wars on the floor or in the garden. They would set up stacks of books for hills and model buildings. The toy soldiers were hollow cast lead figures made by the still popular uh, W. Britton's Toy Soldier Company. The rules were simple and fun. Players would line up their respective armies and set deployment zone. 
and then they would proceed to take turn maneuvering their fictional armies around the floor or garden. Inf infantry could move one foot, cavalry moved two feet, artillery could move or fire four times during a turn, and could only move if friendly troops were within six inches, and its movement would be determined by what type of troops escorted the gun. Artillery was really the king of the game, and it was assumed you would use the popular toy 4.7-inch spring-powered breech-loaded naval guns. These toy guns would physically fire to wooden dowels at the opposing forces, and any figures knocked over were considered dead. Also, all the moves were timed. A, ref a referee would clock the respective players, allowing around a minute for each 30 men moved. So the total number of troops would be added up to determine a player's time. He would stand at attention behind his back line until a referee would yell, Go! Then the player would put on the clock to make all his moves. The ref would give warnings when time was running low, and when time is called, the player would have to stop moving troops, stand back up to attention, and play would pass to the next side. Hand-to-hand -con hand -hand combats were also a possibility. Uh, models would be moved into contact, and numbers on both sides would be compared to determine how many prisoners or casualties would be inflicted. There were three types of games or scenarios established in the Little Wars book. There was one, the fight to the finish. Just as it sounds, you would kill or capture your enemy's army to the last and would score points based on how many you killed or finished, right? Uh, two, blow at the rear. Try to achieve victory by sending troops into your enemy's back line. And three, the defensive game. In this scenario, one side would be given two-thirds of the side of the attacking force, um, and they would flip a coin to determine who was the attacker and defender. There were also advanced rules for engineers, uh, supply, dismounted cavalry, etc. Wells also des describes at the end of the book that his little game is not Kriegspiel, but that several people in the British military took a liking t to it, such as British Army Officer Cor Colonel Mark Sykes. Uh, and Colonel Sykes developed a simple Kriegspiel rules based off Little Wars that is also offered in the back of Little Wars. Overall, besides actually firing wooden dowels, the whole principles of miniature war games were laid down in these works that would go on to influence all other war games that came after. Donald Feathers Featherstone, the father of British wargaming, whom we will talk about more in depth in a future episode, claims that Little Wars was his introduction to wargaming in 1955, playing his first game with his brother and his second game with war games legend Tony Bath. These pioneers, in turn, would influence other pioneers, such as Gary Gygax, who later wrote the foreword to a reprint of Little Wars and had this to say about the game. There is no question that Wells wrote a groundbreaking work when he penned Little Wars, which started the hobby of military miniatures wargaming. Had World War I not come hard on the heels of its first publication in 1913, military miniatures game play might have gained a far larger audience than it did back then. As it was, the Big War made interest in the book about Little Ones virtually disappear. For years, Little Wars was known only to a select few, uh, mainly military miniatures gamers in the United Kingdom. Their pursuit and development of the hobby was considerable, but details of that activity remained relatively obscure elsewhere. Gary Gygax. Gary Gy Gygax uh, also goes on to recount that Though he was not exposed to Little Wars till later in life, his interest in wargaming started in much the same vein as H.G. Wells. And he quoted this, My own experience with creating rules for wargaming became, began inauspiciously. I had no idea of the existence of Little Wars or the military miniatures gaming hobby back in the early 1950s. When my friend Don Kay and I thought it would be we could devise rules for playing with toy soldiers, my extensive collection of World War II figurines and tank models, many 54mm Britons figurines from varying periods I had collected since the war had ended, uh, World War II. Unlike the wise Wells, who used toothpick missiles when he fired his miniature artillery pieces, we employed ladyfinger firecrackers, fuses lit, and these explosives proved to be detrimental to the toy soldiers. Casualties were high, so quotes Gary Gygax. Needless to say, H.G. Wells' little game about Little Wars had a huge influence on all of us gamers today and in the past. 
And I will leave you with my favorite quote from Mr. Wells himself, filled his rules with lots of colorful commentary. I could go on now and tell of battles. Conspicuously, in the memory of the one skirmish I have given, I do but taste blood. I would like to go on to a large, thick book. It would be an agreeable task, since I am the chief inventor and practicer so far of Little Wars. There has fallen me of disproportionate share of victories, but let me not boast. For the present, I have done all that I meant to do in this matter. It is for you, dear reader, now to get a floor, a friend, some soldiers, and some guns, and show by a groveling devotion your appreciation of this noble and beautiful gift of a limitless game that I have given you. And if I might for a moment trumpet, how much better in, is this amiable miniature than the real thing? H.G. Wells. Hey, thank you for listening to the supplement of uh, the history of hobby, hobby war games, The Little Wars. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Make sure to leave me some uh, commentary. And if you want to hear about you know some specific thing in uh, the history of hobby games, make sure to mention it to me, and I'll make sure to touch on that. Till next time, you guys have a good week, and we'll see you later.